Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Tunisia, a country in transition. But while the revolution brought justice for one young woman, the struggle is ongoing to make sure rights for all women are preserved in the new Tunisia. Here's our story. I never thought I would get out of prison and be free again. I just never thought that would happen. 28-year-old Rashida Kuki spent 18 months in jail for a crime she says she didn't commit. I was accused of something that I didn't do. I didn't get the chance to defend myself. But thanks to dramatic political upheaval and to her case being taken up by women activists, Rashida is now back home in the village of Janduba in northwestern Tunisia, free to help her mother with the olive harvest. This is where Rashida was born, in one of the poorest regions in Tunisia, North Africa. And it was her family's poverty that forced Rashida, aged just 14, out of school and into the capital city, Tunis, to find work as a maid. I used to buy religious books and notebooks with the money I earned, and I gave the rest to my family. Working as a domestic help is often the only choice open to many poor Tunisian women and girls. And as is the case for domestic workers around the world, too often they are subject to abuse. Such was the case for Rashida. After several years working in different houses, she ended up with a wealthy, influential family, relatives of Tunisia's all-powerful then-president Ben Ali. At first, the new job went well, but when the mother of the house gave birth to a baby boy, everything changed. When she found out that her son was sick, that's when our problems started. Rashida worked day and night caring for the little boy, even sleeping on the floor next to him. But his mother thought Rashida wasn't doing enough, and the beatings started. She would start arguing with me, yelling at me and calling me names, until one day she actually hit me. And since then, she was always hitting me. She confiscated my phone so I couldn't contact my family. For more than four years, Rashida was isolated and a prisoner, even prevented from leaving this house by guards at the door. I tried to run away and she called the police and they caught me. They took me to the police station and they started beating me with a stick. Beat her with impunity. Rashida couldn't stand life in that house any longer. I thought to myself, life in jail is better than life in her house. In a desperate plea for help, Rashida set fire to a small rug in the house, knowing she would be jailed, but preferring that prison to imprisonment in this household. But she was accused of trying to kill the family and was immediately arrested. Without any legal representation, Rashida was charged, sentenced, and thrown into this prison. A verdict of life imprisonment, twice. When I heard this verdict, I lost all hope. I thought my life was over. Rashida felt she had been totally flattened by this injustice, but everyone was scared. Lawyer and activist Hayet Jazar says that at that time there was little freedom for people to speak out against injustice, particularly against the powerful elite. 
The injustice against Rashida was part of the corruption that existed prior to 2011. And Rashida and her family weren't the only ones to suffer injustice under President Ben Ali. For decades, the Tunisians had lived under his brutally repressive regime. Corruption was rampant, and many were living in grinding poverty. And when one young market seller set himself on fire in desperate protest at the years of humiliation, Tunisian people took to the streets demanding an end to the tyranny. This revolution sparked a wave of uprisings which began in Tunisia in late 2010 and swept across the region, bringing change in many Arab countries. And in January 2011, the People's Revolution paid off. Ben Ali fled, leaving the door open for the election of a transitional government and new hope for the future. New hope for women like Rashida. With the collapse of the regime, her mother Saida took her daughter's case to a long-established women's rights organization called the Association for Tunisian Democratic Women, or ATFD, to ask for help. Lawyer Jazar, a member of ATFD, felt that the case should be reopened and the miscarriage of justice rectified. She appealed for a pardon from the new president, hoping that the sentence would be repealed. I was so happy about this. I told myself there was a small thread of hope. 18 months later, they got their reply. The president of the republic gave his pardon and Rashida was set free on the 25th of July, 2012. When I knew that I was free, I didn't believe it. I don't remember anything from that day. I was in shock that I was finally going home. I couldn't believe it. I thought she's never leaving that place at first, but thank God, they let my daughter out. If it wasn't for the revolution, none of this would have happened. Since the revolution, corruption within the judiciary is also being investigated, and Jazar is currently preparing a case against the family who held Rashida. But although Rashida is now free, the struggle for many women is far from over. The revolution isn't finished. We've entered into a revolutionary period. Halima Jouimi is an activist and founder member of ATFD. People are defending their right to a life, their socio-economic rights, their rights to development and to make sure that within the gains won in the revolution, women's rights are also fully protected, ATFD, with funding from the United Nations Democracy Fund, has set up a monitoring center to detect exactly the kind of discrimination Rashida suffered, as well as any injustice against women in all other aspects of life, whether political, social or economic. They're also keeping close watch on the ongoing reform of the judiciary to ensure fair hearings for all. This monitoring centre is very, very important for us, so that women have the same equal opportunities and the same chances in terms of becoming full citizens. As the new constitution is being drawn up in Parliament by the interim government, the role of this pressure group is to help women give voice to their grievances and to defend their rights. And one thing some women fear most in this once largely secular country is the rise of Islamist parties since the revolution and the possible erosion of their hard-earned equality. 
Islamists are the majority in the National Constituent Assembly. Now they have taken the power. We're in the process of controlling the drawing up of the articles so that democracy is installed in the country and that equality between men and women is also written into the Constitution. Because without equal opportunities in education and in work, and without a decent salary and working conditions, you can't say that there's true freedom and that we are all full citizens. And for Rashida, now that she is free, her main priority also is to become a full citizen in the new Tunisia. She doesn't long for a family and children of her own, like many women her age, but her main wish is to find a fair job with a decent wage and to be able to help her elderly parents as they helped her win back her freedom. I hope that God give her a living, that she gets a decent job, and I'm no longer concerned about her. I don't want anything else. I want to get a job and work. I want to do things I couldn't do before. I want to help my family have the best life ever.